Oh, hey, how you doing? So today we're going to talk about damage control from your cheat day on keto. I know this might be extremely hard to believe, but there are some people that cheat on keto. So today we're going to talk about damage control and what actually is the damage when you do a cheat day. Now, if you read my books or watch my videos, I never recommend a cheat day, let alone a cheat meal, okay, because it does set you back. But there are going to be people that do go off the program, and let's just talk about what you can do to minimize the damage. So the damage is basically a spike in insulin. Insulin is behind the fatty liver. Insulin is behind the oxidation damage in your arteries, in your kidney, in your eye, in your brain. It is directly linked to causing so many problems. When we bring it to a normal range, all sorts of miracles happened. You have foods that have nutrients and you have foods that do not have nutrients. They're called refined foods or refined carbohydrates. Um, refined sugar, for example, um, has no vitamins or minerals. They take the vitamins and minerals from sugar and they concentrate them as molasses. Okay, so if you were going to use a sweetener in some recipe and you wanted to go off the program, obviously use molasses. Why? Because it has more nutrients. What is the advantage to consuming more nutrient-dense foods? Well, when you actually have nutrients, despite having high carbohydrates, you decrease the complications and the side effects from the damage that that high sugar causes. Okay, so you'll have, like a diabetic, for example, if they have high sugar and they're taking nutrients, they have a lot less side effects. When they consume refined foods without the nutrients, there's more damage in the eye, for example, in the kidney, in the heart. So it's these nutrients that protect you against the damage of high insulin to a certain degree. So let's just look at juice, for example, that's pasteurized versus the actual whole fruit, okay? Well, the fruit has the vitamins and minerals, the enzymes, and the fiber that can buffer the effects of that fructose sugar. Um, juice is this concentrated sugar and it's pasteurized. They kill the nutrients through the heat and um, there's very little enzymes left, but it will sit on the shelf for a long period of time. So of course, fruit is a lot better than juice. Uh, let's say, for example, you're doing a potato versus a yam or a sweet potato. There's more nutrients in a yam or a sweet potato than there is in a potato. Wild rice versus white rice. There's a lot more nutrients in the wild rice. And then if you had a choice between the actual fruit, like an apple, versus berries, berries are lower in sugar and they have a good amount of fiber and they're much better than fruit on the glycemic index. All right, the next one is the type of sugar that you're going to consume. Um, you have glucose, you have fructose, there's other sugars as well. But table sugar, for example, is a combination, a 50-50 split of glucose and fructose. So when we talk about high fructose corn syrup, we have like 50, I think it's 58% fructose and then the rest glucose. So there's different percentages of these two sugars. And then we have agave nectar, which is at least 70% fructose and the rest glucose. Um, and then we have beet sugar, which is the same as table sugar, but beet sugar is GMO, cane sugar is not. So the type of sugar is important too, because if it's uh, GMO, it has residues of glyphosate, which is a chemical. We're just talking about relative differences in what's worse, okay? The sugar with the glyphosate or the sugar without the glyphosate. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video on fructose, but what you have to realize about fructose, which is confusing for a lot of people because they, they are told that fructose is low on the glycemic index, okay? And it is, it's like 19. So just knowing that information, you're like, oh, wow, I can do fructose, that's totally fine. And I can do agave nectar because that is uh, so-called keto friendly because it's low on the glycemic index, right? Wrong. The problem, if a uh, sugar has too much fructose, what happens is that the liver is forced to metabolize all of it. So when you have regular glucose, all the cells can metabolize that sugar, okay? So it kind of spreads out all over the place, but fructose is 
forces the liver to deal with it. So we have a situation where the liver is overloaded, especially if there's too much uh, fructose. And that's why like, you know, people like drinking all this high fructose corn syrup crap, and they're just really messing up their liver. It's twice as damaging than glucose. It's, it causes insulin resistance. It causes a fatty liver um, way more than glucose. So it just creates more damage in the liver. It's, it's similar to consuming alcohol. So if you have a choice, avoid fructose. Okay, now you say, well, what about fruit? Well, in the fruit, you have a certain amount of fructose, but you have the fiber, you have the nutrients that buffer the effects. And then we have alcohol, right? So if you have a choice between drinking alcohol versus alcohol with sugar and all the sugary drinks, do the straight alcohol because that's going to have less effect on the liver. Unless you do a lot of straight alcohol, then that's going to have more of damaging effects. All right, next one, we talked about this already, fiber. Fiber reduces insulin. Even now, fiber is considered a carbohydrate in fruits and vegetables. It does not spike insulin. So if you're doing a cheat meal, make sure you increase your fiber to reduce the insulin effect. All right, next one, organic versus commercial. Well, if it's commercial, it's going to be GMO usually. Okay, organic means without pesticides and insecticides and antibiotics. So let's say, for example, you're forced to do a cheat day and you have to do some carbohydrates in the form of corn. Okay, corn chips, popcorn, do organic. At least it'll be without the glyphosate. Okay, that's a step up. Soy, for example. Let's say you're at the grocery store, for example, and you, you need to buy a dressing or mayonnaise or something like that. And all you see is soy, 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 soy. You can't find any alternative. Um, and there's one that's organic soy. Well, that's a step up. Same thing with canola oil, organic, step up, because it's, it has uh, glyphosate in there. Now, MSG, monosodium glutamate, will increase and spike your insulin by 300%. It's hidden as modified food starch. This is why you need to read the ingredients in foods. But it's in a lot of restaurants that are fast food, and other restaurants too. So you really have to be aware of if you're in a, like a Chinese restaurant in America, you're probably gonna get MSG. And that's gonna be a problem because it's going to spike your insulin, because it's usually carbohydrates or sugar, and MSG. Insulin's gonna push it down. You're gonna end up with low blood sugars and you're gonna be hungry an hour later, which is gonna cause you to eat more, okay? But of course, while you're eating it, it's like, wow, this tastes so good, it's amazing just because it, the chemical may, makes it taste better than it really is. Okay, to minimize the damage, you can also consume apple cider vinegar with that meal, and that will help you. Of course, dilute it, like one tablespoon in some water, that will help your blood sugars. Also, by taking uh, potassium, magnesium, in electrolyte mix, or in some powder, B1, in nutritional yeast and vitamin D, these nutrients actually help stabilize your blood sugars. They improve insulin resistance. They will, to a certain degree, buffer the effect of the high sugar, okay? That's why the nutrient-dense foods are recommended. But you can just take those nutrients individually to kind of minimize the damage. Now, when you exercise, you can burn off the excess sugar that you just consumed. That would be a smart thing. Um, and then, of course, get right on a fasting program fast longer to make up the damage from the cheat meal, okay? You notice I didn't say cheat day. Um, so we fast and we can basically just bring our uh, insulin down to where it needs to be over a long period of time. And then your body will start burning up the excess sugar and then tap in the fat again. Now just realize when you do a cheat meal, it can knock you out of ketosis for a good amount of time. So I would recommend having an agreement with yourself if you go off the program then you automatically have to make up the damage by fasting a lot longer than you normally would. I think that would be a very good uh, thing to do. When you go off the keto plan, don't spread it out for a long period of time. Just do it for a shorter period of time and then get right back on the plan. Now you see this a lot with holidays. People be between Thanksgiving and New Year's, they go off the program. The longer you do that, the more damage it, it creates. Why don't you just go off on Thanksgiving, okay, or maybe even that Thanksgiving meal and have it one meal, a huge meal, go off the program and get right back on it. 
So let's say, for example, it's the weekend. Um, a lot of times people have the entire weekend of one big alcohol experience. Well, just like make it a Friday night or a Saturday night and then get right back on it so you don't spread it out over a long period of time. All right, there you have it. Um, damage control on your cheat meal. All right, thanks for watching. So if you want to get notified with all my content, click the notification bell next to subscribed.